Well, speaking of things that do have release dates that we're probably not going to slip, uh, we think uh, the Steam Steam Link and Steam Controller are going to be out on November 10th. Which, oh. Uh, also, that's, that's a big day. Yeah. November that, 10th. Wow. Oh. That, that keeps popping up. Uh, and in preparation for that. And that's uh, something we haven't, you know, heard a lot about from recently and kind of got delayed and went through its own share of so it's you know interesting to see if it's finally here hardware is, hardware and you know all the whole steam os mm-hmm. a- ecosystem is going to you know going to have its own uh, you know growing pains but yeah. uh, one thing we we've seen in preparation for that is uh, just recently valve uh, put out a new beta interface for the steam big picture mode and that's that's the the interface you'll use uh, when you're controlling steam from from your couch uh, it's not really designed to be used uh, on the desktop, though you can use it. Mm-hmm. Uh, it just it just takes up the full screen. All the text is really big, so you can read it from far away. Yeah. Uh, and they've had this for several years. Uh, but they just unveiled a, a new, much nicer uh, interface for it. And uh, Jared and I just did a, just did a, uh, a walkthrough of that you can find on the site. Uh, but uh, That's cool. I've never used it myself. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, this is interesting for me because my living room is set up around big picture mode. Yeah, uh, my, is... yeah my, my living room setup is built around my PC, and I use Steam big picture mode for half of my gaming, probably. Uh, and I've used the old version, which was adequate, but it had a very rough around the edges feeling to it. it, it had, you, ever, like, you ever download a Linux program that's got a mature code base, but where the GUI was added later on? Oh, yeah. uh, and you kind of like, and oh, you can this... tell it was kind of done by an yeah, engineer. Yeah, you can tell it was kind of <laughs> done by an engineer. Uh, while there is some really aesthetically pleasing stuff, you know, that weird ambient underwater feel and stuff to, to, to the Steam's TV uh, layout thing on Moisey, uh, it's never really felt completely congruent. What Dan and I looked at today looks like, assuming it all works well, looks like a vast step up. Uh, it's much smarter use of your of your screen real estate. There's more on the screen, but it's not happening in a busy or confusing way. So you have more options available to you per screen without any without it being hard to see or hard to select what you want to select. Yeah, it's it's it kind of at first glance looks like uh, like a, a mishmash of the Xbox One and PS4 mm-hmm. uh, UIs in that it's you know kind of tile based, but it seems much more intelligent. I don't necessarily, laid out. I don't necessarily care for either one of those interfaces. I, though, so. I don't really either. Um, and I think this is much more intelligently laid out than either of them. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's there's just it's much more intuitive, easy to easy to get to your settings, easy to get to your games. Uh, and and there's it's unlike the PS4 UI, which is just kind of a, a one row of uh, of icons. Um, it's it's much more dense with options on a screen, and they're all they're all presented large and easy to select. And so it's not like yeah. like as long as it's not like Windows 10 or a- Xbox, I just find things kind of hard to find in that kind of setup. Right. We talked about that. No, it's not quite as hodgepodgey as that. Yeah. It, it's smarter. Um, you've got about 12, when you're actually in your like game library, it's about 12 game tiles per screen. Or, I'm laid sorry, out I should say Win 8. Win, Win 10 uses right. some of that, but, yeah. but Win 8 was the one Win 8 is right. Yeah, it's laid out. Yeah, we made yeah. that same comparison today, but fortunately, I, I think that what we saw, the, it's it's much more intelligently, it's yeah. just more ergonomic. It's more intuitive. You got, you've got three, a 3x4 three grid of games in your library. You're Side tiles are all very clearly labeled. They're large enough to see what each of them are supposed to be. They're not too cluttered. Um, I think it'd be easy to use. You know, I, I use a uh, Microsoft controller in my living room, but I also use a keyboard with a touchpad. Both of those are going to work fine. Um, I was I, very I happy with it. Well, an important distinction well, between this and and Windows 8 and Windows 10, uh, the touch interface, is that those are designed to be used with a touch UI. This is designed to be used for a controller, which is you know a very a very different a touch approach. controller though, Dan. Uh, yeah, I guess, yeah. But, I guess like, with, the, with the Steam, the Steam uh, controller is touch based, but it, but so it's. When's the last time you got your hands on the Steam controller? I haven't used right. it since since they took away the second uh, touchpad. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I, me too. I haven't used it since about last year. Actually, right. I haven't had me my too. hands. Actually, on it. same here. That, yeah. that was the last time I had it. Okay, too. so I'm kind of curious because there were some. It was weird. <laughs> Let me just say that. It was weird when I used it, and it was super early, obviously. I'm curious to see what the refinements have been. Mm-hmm. I liked it. I, I thought it was kind of groovy. I was like, I I, I, I would need days with it yeah. to know for yeah, sure. It, but it'll, but I, I like it. It'll take some getting used to. Exactly. Well, Given I had five minutes with it, you know. Yeah. One of the one of the cooler things about about the new uh, Steam Big Picture mode, though, is is kind of the discovery and reminder mm-hmm. aspects of it. Uh, when you when you first start up the main screen, it's much more it's much more icon based than it than it is in the in the current uh, public one as opposed to the beta one. Anyone can opt into this, by the way. Um, it where before it just had like the the library store uh, uh, community buttons that just are text. Now it's very icon based. But under that, 
Uh, it has a big button for resume the game you were just playing. It has one for here's what your friends are playing, what, you know, a big group of your friends are currently playing. And then it has uh, one for don't forget to play, which is uh, a window for games that you've, you've bought, you own, but have never played. It's your Over, pile of shame window. Uh, I was yeah. going to say, that would be most of my games. <laughs> <laughs> it, it that part a, of my yeah. desktop would be huge. Yeah. You know, I am remar- a, an, a, a recent one. I, I, was it Lucy that did the article about our piles of shame a year ago? I think, I, I, think so. I am remarkably disciplined in my Steam purchasing. Are I you? Guess. <laughs> yeah, I mostly play the Steam games I buy. Not all of them, but, but mostly. But that would be a welcome icon. Although I to, plan to play the, all the Steam <laughs> games that I have. All, but, all the best intentions. <laughs> <laughs> but it did. Uh, today it was reminding us that in the video that we needed to take a shower with our fathers. That was interesting. <laughs> yes. um, shower, so, shower with your dad simulator, yes. Yeah. Uh, um, but yeah, like my, mine saying, oh, yeah, you need to play Soma. It's like, okay, yeah, yeah that's true. I do need yeah. to do that. Um, but then actually, I mean, you know, I'll, I'll say for me with a large game library, there's some things I tend to continue to gravitate toward, and that's kind of nice to be able to remind me, yeah, you know what, I really actually do want to play that, so maybe that'll be more of a reason for me to jump in as opposed to me just looking through the same icons that I'm used to seeing, right, or my same list. Yeah, and I wanted to I wanted to pop up to me and remind me maybe of things I've just neglected for a long time, too. Yeah. Hey, you loved Osmos. You haven't played that in forever. Go back and do that tonight. You know, that might be fun. It's the, been a while since you played Audio Surf. Get back in there. The other thing that, that I was really impressed by about the new UI is uh, the amount of like kind of power user features it gives you access to. Uh, in the old one, I'm I'm pretty sure it didn't it didn't give you nearly this much access. Uh, you you can do things like you can you can adjust the uh, the startup o- launch options. Like if you want to disable startup movies, you can do it from big picture mode. If you want to to uh, join betas, you can enter that code in there. You can uh, you can verify the integrity of a game's cache from big picture mode. Mm-hmm. So pr- and pretty it's much, all easy to find now too. Yeah. The, all those options are very clearly and easily laid out in, in places that are logical. You're just like, I bet you that's right. Yep, that's where it is. Yeah, pretty much everything you can do on, on the on the uh, desktop UI you can do from big picture mode now, which is which is a, I think a big step up. And you know maybe you could do it. I just didn't know how to do it because it wasn't obvious. Um, so I, I think it's a, a big step up, uh, and like I think it is the nicest uh, home console, you know, console UI uh, that you can put on your TV right now, based on you know, based on one day of, of tinkering with it. Well, I'm I'm still a uh, office desk, uh, you know, 28 inch monitor PC gaming kind of guy. Mm-hmm. Maybe this will be the impetus for me to actually bring my PC into the living room and yeah. check it out then, or or yeah. plug in a Steam Link on, yeah. on November 10th. Yeah, I ultimately made that switch over because I wanted to start playing games with my wife, and I w- both of us weren't huddling next to the computer right. very well. So brought it in there and set it all up, and we 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 cut the cord with cable anyway, and so the, it made sense to have the, the PC at the too, so yeah, had yeah, the center of the living room. And boy, you know, it has worked out great. Uh, yeah. It really has. I, I've been very happy, even with the old versions. So. Are, you, are you booting directly into it? Uh, yeah, I boot directly into it now. I mean, I, I, I occasionally cut out to the regular Steam interface if I want to do some of that maintenance type stuff you were uh, talking about. Mm-hmm. And of course, there are some games that only work with mouse and keyboard, yeah. and I have a kind of a, a less uh, a less elegant solution for that. But <laughs> that's that's a whole other long story. But yeah, I, I boot straight into it and uh, have done so for months, and I'm very happy with it. Yeah, and, and uh, like the, I, I kind of hope that they go back and, and kind of update the the desktop UI with with some of the stuff they've got in here, just yeah. kind of the more of the visual language, because uh, the, the desktop client is is okay. It's very it's very utilitarian, which I you know I I have nothing against utilitarian. Don't get me wrong. But you know, could could use some some nicer you know a little facelift based on. Uh, Sometimes some I do the... forget where specific options are that mm-hmm. you know in the in the desktop UI, and I have to kind of hunt and peck around a little bit because yeah. it can get a little bulky. I mean, there's a lot of stuff to do in there. Yeah, I th- I feel like the the big picture mode uh, UI is actually like faster. It streamlines it a little bit. A well, little faster. Uh, like just the just animations uh, as, as it shifts around and and. Uh, Loads new things seems faster hmm. than, than the desktop. Which is one. funny because it's not like the desktop one is very graphically intensive or anything. I'll it, tell maybe you, it's a little bit bloated. Maybe it's a lot of data. You know, it's yeah. going to pull. A lot I of data. wish I wish I could could find a way to to qualify the the journey, the process that took took us from, you know, uh, Steam, that thing that came with Half Life Two that we all hate, <laughs> to Steam, this thing I play. Almost all my games on. Like how, how does that, that that thing that kept us from playing? Half-Life yeah, that thing that kept Half Life Two from working uh, to to this thing that has become so much a part of, of the way I play games every day that that it's mm-hmm. second nature to to mm-hmm. jump straight into it. Easy, yeah, and it, it would it, it was the easiest way to get hold of games. Yep. Like yeah, like it started it stopped being crappy and started being you know functional. Yeah, and it made it it made it easier to buy games off of Steam than to pirate them. So that I mean, that's that's 
how how it got its hooks in everybody. I, I, it, I didn't have to put on my pants to go get a game. Right. Yeah. It, was, it was easy easier. Definitely, like piracy was was you know going nuts because it was easier than going to the store and buying a game. Not mm-hmm. necessarily because you wanted it for free. It's like well, it's just easier. It's just easier to go and down I, there, download it, and go. And yeah. then Steam was easier than that. So I, that, that that was an obvious win. Yeah, I'm pretty sure my entire college network was served by a single copy of Quake. Uh, I, I yep, think there yep. might have somebody bought one at some point. 